Hello, my Italian food fanatics. Today, we're gonna make caponara. So what does caponara have to do with being a capo? Nada, that's a capo regime. We're making caponara. So why am I wearing the hat? I don't know, I just got the hat and I wanna wear it. So there you go. Please, hit the like button, the thumbs up button, subscribe, hit the bell. Okay, so you'll know, you'll be notified of when I release new videos, which is almost every day, and leave a comment down below. Today, caponata, we're gonna make it, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. It's gonna be soigné. Caponata was originally a way to salvage vegetables that were essentially rotting. The main ingredient is eggplant, and of course, in days gone by, they could put literally any sort of vegetable that you wanted in there with a little bit of tomato. Uh, but the main flavors are agrodolce. That's sweet and sour, actually sour and sweet. Agro meaning sour. You know where you get aggravated, you're sour. And of course, and of course dolce, which is sweet. Agrodolce, sour and sweet, or as we know it, sweet and sour. So it's melanzane or eggplant sweet and sour are the are the flavors now you may think to yourself what do you mean sweet and sour i don't like sweet and sour in a in an eggplant believe it or not sweet and sour is a flavor profile that is ubiquitous across literally every cuisine of the world they have found these combinations from and especially in the middle east and that Middle Eastern flavor profile worked its way into the Mediterranean, uh, up and through Sicily and Calabria and into Italy as well. So that's where essentially we get it from. And of course, the Southern Italians are masters at vegetable cookery. And so consequently, we have the marriage of a lot of different things going on here that I think you're gonna love. So let's not talk about it anymore. You have a little bit of a background uh, about it. So now let's get in that kitchen and attack the caponata. See you in the kitchen. All right, my Italian food fanatics, let's get started. Caponata. Caponata's main ingredient, believe it or not, is eggplant. And so this dish was originally put together to save all of the extras that you had that may have been going bad. So you would chop up all these vegetables and maybe add some anchovies or what have you and save everything from rot. Well, today it's evolved and it's become something of a delicacy to be eaten as an antipasto. And uh, that's the way we're going to treat it today. We're not going to use any anything that's going to go bad or anything like that. But I will we'll first have to start in with the eggplant. And I'll show you how to process that in just a moment. But let's go over some of the other ingredients. It's basically a sweet and sour dish. We're going to be using onions. We're going to be using celery, some anchovies. We'll use some golden raisins in there. Some olives that are chopped up. We have some tomatoes over here. We have a bell pepper. We have pine nuts, we have sugar, and of course we have red wine vinegar. These two combine to create the sweet and sour, agradolce. Now a lot of people think, what is this sweet and sour? I don't like sweet and sour. Actually you do, you just don't know it. So let's, uh, I'm going to clear this off. Let's do the eggplant, and I'm not going to take you through chopping up vegetables and things like that, but the eggplant, we do have to pay some special attention to, and you'll know why in a second. All right, so let's get started with this eggplant. First thing we want to do is cut it down the center, and then let's make life easy on, on all of us. We're going to take and cut so that they're about quarter inch slices of eggplant this way. And then you cut each of the slices here into squares like this. Now obviously they're not all going to be by virtue of the uh, the shape of the eggplant. They can't all be perfect but about this size is good. 
remembering also that these uh, eggplant are going to break down. All right. So you want them a little bit bigger than you think you may want them because at the end they are going to shrink down. All right. So let me do these and we'll come back. All right. Here are our eggplant. And now what we're going to do is salt them. And there's no need for any special type of salt. We're just going to use a little bit of salt and go from up above and salt the eggplant. Now what this does is it draws out some of the bitterness and the moisture in the eggplant. And of course it uh, concentrates that wonderful flavor. We're going to let this sit here while we do all of the other vegetables and get them ready. And then we'll rinse this and basically squeeze out the water and dry them. And then they're going to go and they're going to get fried until they're golden brown. When we're ready to do that, I'll show you. But in the meantime, we have to fabricate the other vegetables. So let's do that. Now, I'm just going to do this so that you can see my thinking here. The way to basically fabricate a red bell pepper or a bell pepper in general. So here I've cut up our bell pepper and you'll notice that I've just taken the, cent the centers at the center out and also trimmed off some of these white parts. Okay. Uh, we don't want these white parts in there. But this is a dish where we're supposed to salvage vegetables and it's a poor person's dish. Consequently, you see that I've left these parts in here. I've left the little bottom parts of the bell pepper and of course the top part as well. We want to waste as little as possible and stay with the spirit of what this particular dish is. And that is again to salvage vegetables that are going bad, even though we all know that I'm not using vegetables that are rotted. All right. It's a poor person's dish and, uh, how we treat our vegetables and the utilization is going to be indicative of that. All right, on to the next. Thing. All right, and now we're also going to chop up our onion. And you know how I like to do onions. I like to peel the outside layer, cut it down the center instead of, you know, actually peeling off uh, the skin. To me, that's a waste of time and also a waste of resources in a lot of in a lot of uh, ways because people end up taking larger chunks of the onion that are not necessary all right so then we're going to chop these up i'm not going to show you how to chop them up i think that you know how to chop up onions so we're on to the next thing now something tells me i better show you that because this has to be chopped fine so I just cut off this portion. I'm going to do a very small amount here and then we're going to cut this way. And that chops the onion very, very fine. OK, so that's what we need to do with the rest. All right. Enough of that. I'll do that and we'll come back and go to our next item. All right. Now we've come to the tomato. In this case, we will be taking out the center portion with the seeds and chopping this up also fine. I'm not going to do that with the rest of the tomatoes for you, but there you go. That's basically what you want. All right. Back with the next thing. All right. And now normally I would let these anchovies, uh, when we cook them up, melt in, but I'm also going to chop these up really fine, mince them essentially, so that we won't have to deal with that. All right, you just give them a one or two over with the knife to really get them minced fine. And we're on to the next thing. This should do it. A couple more turns over and, and we'll do it. So I'm not going to bore you with it. By the way, a lot of recipes say to rinse off the anchovies. And I would do that if they were packed in oil, but I mean in, in salt, but these are oil packed. And so consequently I leave them the way they are. There's no need to rinse oil packed, um, anchovies. All right. Now to our celery. Um, in many recipes, especially, uh, the ones that are coming out of Italy, you'll note that they slice the celery this way. 
and then they boil the celery. We're not going to do that. I don't know why in the world they would boil the celery completely separate from everything else, but that's the way they do it over there. Here we're going to cut it up fine, just like we do with all of our other vegetables, so that our eggplant will sort of stand out a little bit. So I typically cut them the long way like you see. If you have a problem, you have a smaller knife, you can always cut the celery in half and then slice them into sticks like this. So they would end up to be something looking like this and then chop them. All right, that makes it a lot easier for you. So you line them up and then chop. your fingers okay on to the next thing all right let's get started making one of our bases we're gonna take a little bit of tomato juice put it in a bowl along with our vinegar our brown sugar our anchovies and we're gonna whisk them together now this is eventually going to be cooked, so we're not concerned about that now, but what we're doing is we're adding items that don't need a longer cook, like the onions and the celery and the bell peppers need to cook for a longer time in order to soften up. So these will eventually go into the pan when we cook, but they're going to go in there for a far shorter amount of time. So we're going to add in our parsley. Some of these olives that we have, that we've cut up pretty fine. Also our raisins, okay, and our tomatoes. In fact, we got a couple more here, there we go. All right, so this is reserved, and now we have to deal with the eggplant. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we're back. I have taken the eggplant, and in that colander that you saw me put it in, I've rinsed it off, and now we're going to drain it on these paper towels. This is a very important step, believe it or not. The eggplant has to be dried, and as much of the moisture removed because when it goes into the oil, we don't want a spitting volcano of oil all over the place. So this is not enough paper towel for the job that we need to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another paper towel and slowly in batches dry this off and press it down as much as we possibly can to squeeze out any and all water. All right, and I'll come back with that. All right, we're back. I just wanted to show you what I've done here. I've taken these eggplant and I've put it between some paper towel and I've squeezed it really, really good. What this need, what you need to do here, you're not gonna get all of it. There's still some moisture in there. You need to break down the cell structure or collapse the cell structure as much as possible to get rid of all of the moisture and water that you can. And this also serves another function, is that when the eggplant goes into the oil, if the cell structure has broken down, has been collapsed, it will not absorb as much oil as it would otherwise. That's the big secret also with eggplant parmesan or any kind of eggplant dish that you're going to fry the eggplant in, unless it's extremely thin, if they're, if they're large pieces like this, you want to press down and collapse the cell structure and it will not absorb as much uh, oil as it would if you if you did otherwise. So if you're frying the pieces of eggplant, if you press down on them, um, they will absorb less oil. There you go. There's a little secret for you. I'll come back when I've done the rest of this. In the meantime, while I'm squeezing the water and the moisture out of the eggplant, what I have on the stove is a sauce pot that is full of oil that we're going to use to fry 
the eggplant in, all right? So you might as well get things going at the same time. So you're, while you're doing one thing, the, uh, the stove is heating up what you need in just a moment. That way these don't just sit around. All right, we'll come back when we get on the stove and go and fry these things. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we're here at the stove and we have our oil on, canola oil. And it's now at 363, 66, 67, which is perfect because the temperature of the oil is going to drop as soon as we put in our eggplant. So the eggplant goes in. Now you'll notice if you look back that I did not raise the, the level of the canola oil to more than about one-third up the pot. Why? Because the eggplant has water in it and you saw what happened. It just rose up any more and it would have bubbled over and that's something that you really don't want. All right. And so now we're going to move this around into here until the eggplant are golden brown and we'll drain them on this sheet pan here with a paper towel. So I'll come back when that's all done. All right, my Italian food fanatics, I've let these eggplant deep fry here, and I just wanted to show you at what color level you want to remove them out of the oil. That's a beautiful, like a golden brown color, and that's exactly what we're looking for. You need to mix these up, or, you know, this using this swimming method is what they call it. You need to mix them up a little bit so that all sides get equally brown as possible. And then when they get to about this point, then we remove them from the oil and then drain them. Okay, just for you to know. All right, my Italian food fanatics, it's time to bring the caponata together. So we put a pan on the fire. We're going to put a little bit of that 100% California extra virgin olive oil in there. Wait for that to warm up, and then we're going to add our bell pepper, our onions, and our celery. I'll be back when that comes to temperature. All right, it's time to go in with our onions. Saute these up a little bit. You know, we start with the onions first. Give them a little head start. Then, of course, we'll add our bell peppers and our, our celery. And what we're going to try to do here is brown them slightly. All right? We want to develop a little bit of flavor, but we don't want to brown them like we browned the eggplant. All right, we still want some semblance of vibrancy here, and uh, but we want to develop flavor as well. So we're trying to get the best of both worlds. Now, we also have to remember one thing about caponata. Caponata is served at room temperature, warm, or even cold. And so consequently, we're going to have to adjust our seasoning with salt to match that. So when caponata is hot, it should be just slightly on the salty side. So that way when it cools down or is at room temperature, then it will, it will taste perfect. All right. Uh, when you work in garmage or in cold salads and things like that, uh, all of those salads are always over seasoned essentially when they're made by virtue of the fact that when something is cold you need more seasoning in it in order to taste. It's the same thing that goes uh, for high altitude cooking, believe it or not. Uh, in fact, at very high altitudes they have to use such an abundance of salt in order for you to taste the food that it's almost, in my opinion, 
not worth eating any food on any airlines, uh, even if it's, a, say, a 12-hour flight or something like that. I would rather eat fruit or some other item that I know is not going to be so full of salt. You might as well eat a handful of salt when you go, uh, when you eat a meal in an airline. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with this, but look at those colors. I mean, wow. Doesn't that look beautiful? How sweet it is. So, I'll come back when this is uh, browning up and when we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. All right, we are back. And you can see how our vegetables are just slowly starting to get a little bit of browning on the edges, and that's exactly what we want. Now, if you remember, we also put in a bowl earlier our tomato products, our raisins, our olives, and the like. We're going to add that in, and we're also going to add in our melanzane, our eggplant. And now, I'm going to bring this to a simmer. The eggplant's going to cool it down for a second. But we'll bring this to a simmer. And we'll turn down the heat and let this mixture warm up and coat the eggplant. And also, it's going to get thicker. It's going to reduce down. All right? So, look how beautiful that is. I mean, wow. I don't like the big, heavy, large pieces in some caponata because I believe you should be able to take it with a spoon and put it on a, a piece of bread regardless of whether it's going to be a ciabatta or crostini or what have you but it should be manageable with a spoon all right so we're going to let this cook down and I'll come back when we're almost ready all right you see how it's come to a simmer we're now going to turn down the heat and we're going to let it simmer away and let the eggplant basically absorb the flavors and tighten up a little bit as far as the uh, the viscosity it's going to it's going to get more viscous and uh, the water is going to evaporate and the flavors will concentrate themselves at the end of all of that, we'll then taste it and adjust, adjust seasonings. And then we'll have to let it cool down. But we're almost done. All right, I just want to give you an update. You can see how the moisture has evaporated, probably 60% of it. There's still a little bit there. We're going to cook it down just a little bit more. But you'll be able to see trails but also you'll see little bits right there that are still sizzling away. That shows us that there's still a little bit too much moisture in the caponata and we need to reduce it down a little bit more. So it's been about five minutes. We just need a couple more minutes so everything works together. All right, I'll be back. All right, my Italian food fanatics, that does it. All right, we still leave it with a little tiny bit of moisture but there is our caponata. All we need to do now is to cool it down. And while that happens, we will toast our pine nuts, which is the final item that we need to take care of before we're ready to eat this. It makes no difference because this has to cool down to room temperature to begin with. And then we can, uh, so we can toast the pine nuts while that happens. But we're basically done. All right, as I mentioned earlier, this has cooled down just a little bit, and now we're going to taste. Hmm. Wow. 
And that is very, very, very good. It could use a little bit more salt. And that's what we're going to do. Just a little bit, okay? Not too much. It's a little too sweet for my taste, believe it or not. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to taste it again once it's cooled down to room temperature. And I may adjust the flavors by adding a little bit more vinegar. All right? Because you remember, we have those raisins in there as well as the sugar. And so that brings, those raisins also bring uh, sweetness. And the onions have caramelized. And so have the the eggplant and our bell peppers, of course, and the celery. Celery's not going to really bring that much sweetness. They weren't that caramelized. But collectively, we can say that they are. And that's what also brings uh, the sweetness. So we'll let this cool down and we'll adjust seasonings uh, at the end when it's at room temperature. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we now have our pine nuts to toast. These are organic pine nuts. I place them on a high flame. And as you know, from watching me make breadcrumbs and perhaps toasting other uh, items, they stay in the pan like this and we constantly must agitate them so that they get color on all sides, okay? It's important to note that they must be agitated this way, otherwise it will not evenly brown and you'll end up with burned pine nuts. So I'll come back when this is done. Now we're almost coming to the end of the toasting process, but you can smell pine nuts as they toast. Okay, that's a key thing. You have to keep your eyes on the uh, on the nuts themselves and also you have to smell because the smell and the sight will tell you everything you need to know. You need to have a, you need to have a bowl nearby and you can put the pine nuts in after they're done toasting to cool them down. And you can also see that they begin to form a sheen or a shine. And they give off their oils, which is what caramelizes and makes them toasty. So you can see we're almost there. We don't want to toast them too much. We want to just give them a little bit of color, and that's it. All right? And I believe we are there. All right? So they go into another container okay so they don't burn and we must move them around in this container as well because if you don't they will eventually burn they continue to carry over cook as with anything all right let me put this down somewhere but you can see that if we don't continue to To move them like this to essentially cool them down we're gonna have a problem in our hands but that is how you toast pine nuts or any nuts for that matter all right now I can do it you can do it on a lower heat I'm used to doing it on a higher heat I can move a lot faster but if you feel uncomfortable doing that you do it on a lower heat it'll take a little bit longer um, but you'll eventually get it done and you'll become more and more confident as time goes on depending on how much uh, you do this, all right? But you have to be there for it. You cannot leave um, any of these toasting, any nuts that you're toasting, you must be there for them. And I don't like to do them in the oven because the oven uh, doesn't provide as, uh, as good a, as good a uh, toast as it does on, in a skillet on the stove, all right? You'll get burned sides in the oven on a sheet pan or what have you. 
So, there you go. And these are going to go on our caponata. See you in a bit. All right, my Italian food fanatics. You saw me plate up the caponata. You saw me put the pine nuts on there at the beginning of the video with along with the parsley and the bread. Now it's time to taste it. I don't know if it's going to be any good. <laughs> yeah, of course I know it's going to be good. I tasted it already. You think that I would... i tell you what, truth be told, there's a lot of recipes that I've made that you don't see on YouTube, and that's because I didn't really like the way they turned out. So if you see it here, you know it's going to be good. It's already been tested. If it doesn't make the grade, it doesn't get on my channel. And I have done a lot of testing because, honestly, I don't want to put anything bad up. Whatever I say is good is good. Look, my mouth is watering because I know what's coming. This is, <laughs> this is going to be fabulous. Mm. Wow. You know, when this stuff gets to room temperature, it's so much better. In fact, it's even better the next day, believe it or not. If you put this in the refrigerator, pull it out the next day, let it come to room temperature, add a little bit of olive oil in some instances, oh boy. Do you have something? It's a great snack in the in the afternoon. It's a great appetizer. Yeah. You could make a meal out of it because you have vegetables. You have nuts, theoretically, from the pine nuts, which have protein in them a little bit. And the vegetable. This is a complete meal here with the bread. All of those balanced flavors. Mm. Oh, that's just so good. I'm going to finish the whole thing. That's how good it is. Please, hit the thumbs up button. Like, subscribe. Leave me a comment below. All right? Did I get any on my face? Leave me a comment below. If you've made this Send the picture to me on email along with your name, and I will feature you on my channel. I promise, okay? This is so good. You got to make this. It takes a little bit of, uh, of doing to make this, but if you make enough of it, it's worth it. It's worth the time because your friends and your family and your loved ones are going to enjoy this, and they're going to say, wow. We've never had it like this. You don't buy the caponata that you find in the store in a tin can or in a jar. That's absolute garbage. That's for people that don't know any better or that don't have the time. They just want to throw something on a plate. If that's you, please don't. Don't do that. Don't just throw something on a plate. Spend a little bit of time and make this thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You saw how I cooked everything up. The vegetables do not have to be exactly cut. This is something, again, that salvages vegetables that are going bad. So it doesn't really matter. Just put them together. If you fry the eggplant like I showed you and, um, and, and brown some of the vegetables with a little bit of tomato, tomato, uh, tomato juice you could put in there as well, it's just going to be fine. There's no, there's no set rules. You mix a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of sugar and pour it on there and adjust it to your taste. Boy, you're going to have something delicious. My mouth waters thinking about the next bite. So come on, don't waste any more time. If you were here, and I wish you were here, I would share this with you. But you're not here, so what do you need to do? Hey, you need to go out and make this yourself. Do you understand? I've shown you how. You can do it. I have faith in you. Now, come on. Go go do it. I'm going to finish this. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Oh, my mouth is watering thinking about the next bite. Oh, I got to have some more. I'm going to. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. 
and I'm going to think of you when I finish it. Come on. Go out there and make it. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your eyeballs. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. See you soon.